G'day guys, Merck here. I'm here with Elon Hazakostas, the lead designer for World of Warcraft. Uh, he's just going to take us through exactly what he does for the game. Alright, so yeah, um, like I said, my name is Elon Hazakostas. I'm one of the lead game designers in World of Warcraft. Uh, I, I work with a bunch of different teams, kind of overseeing the creation of a lot of the content that goes into the game. In particular, I work really closely overseeing the Raiden Dungeon content in the last couple of expansions. Um, also some involvement in you know, class design, systems, rewards here and there, achievements, a little bit of everything. Fantastic. Alright, well I'm um, just jumping straight into things, leveling in Draenor. Um, I did a bit of it on the beta. Very enjoyable, uh, particularly liked Frostfire Ridge. Cool. Um, but basically I guess the, the main question I have on my mind at the moment is how long is it going to take to get from 90 to 100 based on like 85 to 90 or even 80 to 85 or... Um. Look, I think, I think it will vary, right? It depends on, on the approach that you're taking. If you are someone who likes to sort of stop, read the quest text, go through systematically, complete each zone before moving on, or someone who's just looking for efficiency, 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 how fast can you possibly do it? Um, I think it will be comparable to the leveling rates in Panaria. Maybe it'll take a little bit longer, uh, but not tremendously so. I mean, we have 10 levels to cover, but we didn't use that as you know, an excuse to double the amount of time it takes. Stretch it out. It's more yeah. just, you know, can get you level up moments more, a bit more frequently. Um, we, we create the content first, and then we adjust the leveling pace to suit the content that we have, really. We're not, you know, aiming for a particular target, we just sort of see where it comes out. So with that in mind, like the uh, perk system that you brought in for leveling, is that going to speed things up somewhat, whereas it um, maybe wouldn't have before? It, I, I mean, for some, some perks certainly will speed things along a little bit in terms of your overall efficiency. I think the main thing that we were trying to do with the general perks was to, to give you moments of excitement, things to look forward to as you've got these levels. Um, because, you know, you know, you're not getting a talent point every level or anything, and, and we certainly don't want to give you a new ability every level, because yeah. at that point, you know, we're actually trying to go in the opposite direction in terms of the sheer number of, of buttons you have to worry about finding home for, and your keybinds and your action bars. But we do want there to be things to look forward to. And a lot of these are pretty transformative. They'll change the way that, you know, you can interact with the world, juice up your abilities, and give you new ways of using them. And they are random, I understand. They're not going to come in any set order. You can exactly. recuperate, improve, recuperate, or something. Exactly. Really exactly. Random. So it's guaranteed that you'll get them all by the time you hit 100, but it's a random grab bag as you go. Uh, so basically, uh, garrisons are going to be a huge part of the leveling, leveling experience in Draenor. Um, what can we expect out of like full level garrisons that maybe we didn't see in beta? Um, Bigger buildings, more people. What yeah, are you looking at? Exactly. I mean, I think, I think the garrison grows in size. As you, when you first start out, you really have this kind of relatively ramshackle, thrown together base that's just yeah, an outpost. Yeah, literally, you just plant the flag. And, exactly, and yeah. it's just just basic walls, mostly wooden. Um, over time, uh, you know, in the course of leveling, you'll upgrade it to a tier two garrison, and then finally, more in the end game, you can get a full full fledged tier three garrison, which then lets you level your buildings up also to level three. So I think of you know, the, the full garrison, much larger scale, it's you know, almost the size of some small cities in some cases, yeah. um, pretty overwhelming in scope. I think the thing that is least apparent at the surface, and I think one of the cool things about the garrison, players are really going to have to dive in and experience firsthand, is the amount of depth and content unlocked and associated with each one of these buildings as you level mm -hmm. them up, construct them, and upgrade them. So I mean, for example, you know, the, if you choose to build the stables, well, the stables, when you get, you know, a mount perk, you can move it faster in the outdoor world, fairly straightforward. But what it also does for you is unlocks a series of side quests where you can now track down, capture, tame, train various beasts of Draenor for across the zones of the, of the, of the continent and get them as mounts of your own. And the only way to get those mounts is through this building. Or if you were a more PvP-oriented player and you build a gladiator sanctum, uh, you do some passive bonuses, but also unlocks a series of quest lines where you initially hunt down members of the opposite faction once you've proven so yourself. Say, um, out in Draenor. Exactly. Awesome. In, in Ashram and Draenor, once you've proven yourself in a sort of a threshold level, you can then declare a particular racial nemesis. You can say, you know, I'm going to be the slayer of gnomes and I'm going to kill you know, you, you actually really burn a gnome effigy statue in that case, and you have to hunt down gnomes in particular now if you do enough of that. You can earn a title, you can be Gnome Bane or, or something along those lines. There's one of those for every enemy race. And once you've proven yourself there, you actually get invited to this special underground fight club. It's like a 25 player free for all event, literally just completely free for all. Last, last man standing wins um, for further, you know, titles, prestige, some gear. And again, that's just from so the like a really amped up Stranglethorn Arena. Exactly. Imagine 25 yeah. players Stranglethorn Arena. <laughs> um, 
And that's just this, that's just this one building, right? And every building in the mid, large and medium categories has something like this. Uh, are we going to have to make uh, choices between buildings? Like, are we going to absolutely build a certain set and not like any others? Or? I mean, well, okay. So we definitely want the garrison to be about meaningful choice and, and customizing it to suit your interests, your place on. And the person who is you know, the out and out collector for them, the stables might seem like a no brainer. Whereas a hardcore raider might look at that and think, well, why would you ever build a stable? There's no power to be gained from mounts. Um, but if you want to, you know, if you want to explore the different options, you can destroy a building that you already have constructed, construct a different one in its place. You're going to lose some of the resources you spent building that up. But if you want to, you can experiment and try out the different types of content as you go. And obviously, those perks that you got from the other buildings wouldn't remain active once they were destroyed. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, so, legendaries in the new expansion, obviously, we've had them in the, the previous expansions, mm -hmm. but they're starting to become more something everyone can get if they try hard enough rather than class specific. Yes. Um, is that going to be the same approach in Draenor? It's not something, so we definitely have a legendary plan in the same vein as the Cloak from Mists. Um, yeah. It's going to be a legendary, eventually a legendary ring that you get through working with Khadgar. He's kind of the new Rathion of, Dra of Draenor. Um, right. And you'll actually start, start that quest before you even hit level 100. Um, you know, I think level 98 or so, Khadgar will contact you, and your first step will involve doing the Skyreach dungeon in Spires of Iraq that kind of begins this progression that will eventually upgrade through raiding, through other, other, other things. Um, we view this type of legendary as certainly distinct from things we've done in the past, like you know the War Blades or Dragon Wrath yeah. or what have you. And it is something that everyone can get, theoretically, but you have to put a lot of time and hard work into it, you know, yeah. and you have to earn it. And while in theory, the cloak was available for everyone to get, many of the players okay. never got the Legendary Cloak. And we see it as something that really symbolizes the time that you've spent doing this content while it was current, while it was active, the same way years from now when you see someone with a Legendary Cloak, you see them with the Legend of Pandaria title. Yeah. That means that they were there when Mists was around. Yeah, was going they there. did it when it was current. Yeah. And the ring is going to be very similar in that regard. Um, you know, and it, it is something that's sort of even-handed, equally accessible. It's not dependent on your guild leader choosing you to receive to be to be the one who gets to loot the yeah, artifacts or fragments, yeah. exactly, <laughs> or just having amazing RNG luck of getting this rare drop. That said, we definitely don't preclude and, and close the door to the option of also having more traditional, you know class-specific weapon or weapon for a handful of classes that is obtained through more traditional means. Cool. Alright, and um, so like uh, also with the legendary quests and such, they did include an element of PvE last time, uh, an element of PvP yes. I should say, last time. Uh, will that be the same case in Drain or is it going to be more PvP so stuff? We don't have specific plans yeah. currently. Uh, I think so. We definitely want people to, in order to the legendary to kind of branch out and participate in a wide variety of activities, yes. right? That it's not just about raiding, it's about also doing outdoor quests, it's about doing dungeons, but it's about doing solo challenges, these little like mini scenarios where you have to prove yourself. And PvP in some way is a part of the game. Um, that said, there are definitely some issues with the exact implementation that we had, I think, in the Rathian Cloak Quest line. Okay. I think focusing so much on victory in public battlegrounds set players up for a pretty frustrating experience in some cases. Yeah. Even yeah, for some players, they just didn't enjoy it, they have wanted no part of that particular type of gameplay. But even those who may, might have enjoyed it, in the battleground, you know, we aim for a 50-50 win loss rate. In yeah. theory, you know, something like um, you know, Katmogu or what have you is pretty pretty balanced overall. Pretty even, yeah. But it's quite possible that it's, you know, there's a one in 128 chance that you know you, you lose like 10 point flips in a row. <laughs> and you're that person who spent, you know, four hours in a row on some Saturday afternoon trying to get your legendary quest done and just, just lost every happen. single one. Yeah. And that's Pretty miserable, actually, if it comes down to that. Yeah. Um, and so, of course, that thing clearly could have done better there. And we're going to learn from those lessons going forward. Um, cool. And um, also, uh, with Mr. Pandaria and, and the loot rolls and everything, mm -hmm. um, will that be coming back for Draenor? Will we, we yes. to see that? Yes. I think we're really happy with how the bonus roll system as a whole worked out in terms of giving players more direct agency and control over the loot RNG. They can focus yeah. more on specific bosses if they want items from those bosses. And it's, it's nice in that it's a universal reward. It's equally valuable, pretty much no matter what your playstyle or your level of content. I think when we start giving out real items, well, suddenly now it's either yeah. best in the slot if you're the raid finder player, nothing can compare to it, and or totally irrelevant or useless if you're the high raider, because why would you ever equip the item? It's not as good as what you can get. Bonus roll is important no matter what. We are changing the way in which they're rewarded, however. I think in this second area, we focused everyone on daily quests and getting lesser charms, and that's kind of the one route yeah. of and and. We found that most players kind of settled into a routine of finding the most efficient way 
to get less returns. Yeah, tokens, yeah. Um, today it's fraud genocide, because that's what you do. <laughs> it wasn't back in the day. But um, I haven't been fully informed on that. Exactly, yes. Yeah, yeah, no, there's, 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 there's this spot, a bunch of groups there's this spot on the side <laughs> where you just grind frogs and you get lots and lots of other charms, or a lot of lesser charms. I've been using that to kill people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But yeah, so I, and, and that, that felt a bit too repetitive. So what we're actually doing is we're offering much more variety, much more granularity in how you get your bonus rolls. Um, these like Warforged Seals of Fate, where uh, you can actually obtain them using one of four different currencies. There's actually, you can turn in garrison resources. You can turn okay. in Apexis Crystals, which are kind of an outdoor in-game currency. Um, same as like uh, the Apexis Crystals from... Not exactly those, but vaguely similar, but not, not literally the same currency. You can't go back to Blade's Edge and get them. But, um, of course, so many. I know. They're, 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 they're what you can earn by doing our sort of outdoor end game areas that are sort of the, success, the spiritual successors to, to, to daily quests. Um, okay. You can also turn in honor if you want to PvP a little bit, and you can turn in gold. And the thought is you can pick, and also if you happen to build an armory in your garrison, a level 3 armory will give you one for free. So there's five potential options, and you can pick three each week. And if you pick the same one multiple times, its cost will increase progressively. Okay. So let's say you're someone who has a million gold, and you just don't want to spend time dealing with the other resources this week. You, you can get all of them with gold, but the first one might cost 500, the second will cost 1,000, the third will cost 2,000. So it gets to be a bit expensive, or so you can you just... So you kind of do have to spread it out. Exactly. You want to do it the most it, it's, it's up to you, right? Yeah. It's, it's about player choice and agency. Or you can do you know, a little bit of honor, some of Texas crystals, and then use some gold to get the last, or use your armor to get the last, whatever yeah. you prefer. Whatever. Uh, just going back to Warforged Seals for yeah. a minute and that bonus roll, um, is there any plans on making the loot slightly more specific? So, I, I mean, I mm -hmm. don't know about other people, but yeah. I have like four pairs of heroic Warforged leggings in my bag and I'm still using a chest from the Throne of Thunder. Yes. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so but in order to give people a bit more control, particularly with the Warforged Seal system, when you do a bonus roll on an item, we are going to keep track of what you want with bonus rolls. So that, you know, let's say there's one boss that has both legs and chest piece, and you bonus roll, and you win the legs. Well, okay, I'd be a little disappointed if you didn't need them, but any subsequent bonus rolls will pretty much guarantee that you're going to get chest. Okay. Uh, if you get it, you might get nothing, that's always an option. Perfect. But, and then once, you, if you want to keep bonus rolling after that for some reason, now it's back to a 50-50 chance between the two. But this way we can help limit that, just the bad RNG experience like you mentioned, you just keep getting the same item yeah. you don't want, and can never hit the trinket or the weapon that's also on the table. And uh, given that we have a limited amount of uh, seals that we can mm -hmm. uh, actually obtain each week, is there any plans on making multiple uh, bonus rolls available on boss fights? Or? Um, I actually, so the way it works, because most of our blockouts on all difficulties except Mythic are, are loot based rather than boss based, currently right. I believe you actually can go back and kill the boss a second time in a given week. And you won't actually get the ability to loot the boss in terms of you know, clicking on the corpse, right. but you will get a bonus roll prompt if you want to do that open once. So that's up to you. Very interesting. All right. Um, and so, high end PVE, uh, Draenor. What yes. can we expect there? Because I mean, I've seen I've seen the previews, but mm -hmm. I haven't actually played on the beta. Yep. What what am I going to be going into? I guess. Well, from some dungeons. Some, some, to, sure. Yeah. So okay. So I think there's going to be sort of three phases, I guess, to the rollout of high end PVE content in, in Warlords and 6.0. Um, initially, when you first when Draenor first releases, when you first hit 100. Both of the raid zones are actually closed. We're keeping them closed for a little bit to let players right. focus on not necessarily needing to rush to level as much, but also letting other systems like our dungeon content, professions, crafting, outdoor content shine before yeah. they get completely stepped on by all the raid loot that's out there. So initially, actually, we're excited to give the players the option to run our challenge mode dungeons in a way that's not purely about just the time trial and doing them quickly. Okay. Um, there'll be a daily challenge mode quest of the day that actually rewards a chance at our random epic grab bag style, like Croak scenario loot used to be. Sure. Before raids are open, that's actually going to be some of the best loot that exists in the game. Okay. And if you want to do the speedrun component also, you can do that for you know, the usual title, map type reward. But really, for the first few weeks, there's this world where it's like you can go run a hard dungeon and get some really good loot for it with your friends. So it's kind of combining like uh, challenge modes and heroic scenarios into this one. A, 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 a little bit of that, yes. You know, I think I think it's for people who want that. You know, our our heroic dungeons are, are decently challenging. You know, we require you to do silver proving rounds before you can queue for them randomly. Yeah. Um, so they're maybe a little bit harder than this ones were, but they're still made ultimately for random groups that are being put together by a group. You know, by a group yeah. finder. Whereas challenge mode dungeons, you know, full pre-made group for and for people who are looking for that, you know old school hardcore dungeon experience, going in with your friends, yeah. 
You need to use some crowd control, you need to actually call your targets, approach each pack of mobs with a plan. This is going to be the content for you. Then on, then on December 2nd, uh, High Mall Raid, the first of our two raids, will open up. Yep. And there's a seven boss raid in the western end of the Grand. It's, you, you're fighting the, the seat of power of the Ogre Empire in Draenor. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of awesome fights waiting for players there. And More Grom, I hope? Uh, not any Grom, actually. Really? No, yeah, there, there are Ogron, which are kind of like this hybrid between Ogres and Grom. But you'll see a lot more Grom in the Blackrock Foundry raid, which is coming right. next up after that. Okay. And that's going to be you know, some point later, early in the next year. Um, or sorry, early in 2015, that is not literally yeah. a year later. Yeah. Because um, I think we looking at how uh, Mogish on Vaults and Heart of Fear played out in Mr. Pandaria, we liked the structure of sort of having sort of a half tier up second raid that we keep gated for a while, yeah. let the first one really shine. We actually felt like we probably opened up Heart of Fear too quickly. That a lot of players really weren't done with Mogish on Vaults. We're still right. progressing through it, still cared about the loot from there. But then suddenly Heart of Fear came out and it almost felt irrelevant. Guilds felt pressured to move on. It's hard to keep everyone happy. Exactly. Um, so I think yeah. we're, you know, our plan this time is to, to let, um, let Highmall stand on its own for something more like eight weeks or so. Cool. And then after that, Blackrock Foundry will open up. That is the 10 boss raid. It's the war making center of the Iron Horde. You're really going into their factory, going into their steelworks, disrupting the whole operation, and taking on Warlord Blackhand, who's the war chief of the Blackrock yeah. Orcs uh, as the final boss there. Fantastic. And um, so, obviously, we've got him as the final boss of a raid. Are we going to see yes. any of the other warlords doing, you know, fantastic things or being big bosses? Mm -hmm. or, I um, mean, obviously, what you can talk about. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely sort of the, the hit list that you're running down. It's kind yeah. of like your kill bill list of, you know, people to eliminate. Um, Ner'zhul, the uh, warlord of the Shadow Clan, of the, the Shadow Moon Orcs, is... He's sort of the trailer. Exactly. He's, he's the, the, final, the final boss of the Shadow Moon Barrel Grounds dungeon. So you'll be running into him there. Um, you'll certainly see other warlords making appearances in various places in the outdoor world and quest lines and major events as you as you level up and progress through the story. Yeah, so uh, Juritan was like part of the leveling in Frostfire exactly. which, and that felt quite epic. So yep. seeing that all over the place would be quite cool. It was good to be in the story. Yeah, you know. Um, give me two seconds. <laughs> I think I've got about five minutes. Um, yeah, so I got more, more of a random question. Mm -hmm. um, heirloom and tabard tabs, any plans for that in the future? Or Yes, it's something we definitely want to make happen. Um, I think we, we focus on the toy box first and we kind of have this expanding yeah. collection UI. Um, and I think heirlooms are something that we're working on to deliver in a later patch yep. within within the world of expansion. Okay. Um, awesome. Tabards, no specific date, but also probably in the not terribly distant future. We also want to extend a similar type of system to transmog. Um, that's probably not going to be a patch feature in Warlords, but it's something we want to do in the future. Yeah. Um, you know, we've heard a lot of feedback from players who play you know, Diablo 3, Reaper, seeing how Transmog work in that game. We'd like to make it less of a game of inventory management and filling your bags and banks with all these items and more about collecting looks and appearances that you can swap in and out. I mean, uh, the, the Void Storage tab did make it easier to yeah. an extent, like that was very handy, but... Yeah, we see Void Storage as a band-aid. It's not yeah. a long-term solution, it's more just, you know, finding a way for, okay, Let's give you more storage space, but that's not the long-term answer to the problem. Fair enough. Um, also, daily quests. Just going back to them real quick. Mm -hmm. um, PvP daily quests. Any any plans on having like a specific like daily battleground or quest objective or something like that? And uh, well, maybe one. Yes, yeah, I, mean, I think we'll, we actually we, we got rid of on the battleground front the call to arms system. Yeah. I think that actually in some ways distorted queue, queuing behavior and, and matchmaking results. Yeah, you pre-mades and it, pre -mades. Exactly. Led to some really lopsided yeah. outcomes there. Um, in terms of PvP integration in the outdoor world and your day-to-day -day experience. Our, our big picture substitute for and replacement and evolution of what daily quests were in this and area is a system that's driven through your garrison at max level. When you go there every day, you'll have an option, kind of, you know, in, like if you call in the Isle of Thunder choice UI, where you could choose between PvP and PvE yeah. dailies for the day, um, where you'll have requests for assistance from your forces in outlying areas from two randomized zones. Okay. And these are going to be largely outdoor areas where you kind of go and so you pick, so we say, hey, our forces in Frostfire are under attack by ogres and request assistance dealing with them. Our forces in the ground are, you know, are having problems with, you know, the pale orcs or whatever forces are there. Who do you want to help? You pick one option or the other, and you go out into the world. 
But when you get there, it's actually much more of a free-form objective. It's not, you know, kill these mobs or free these prisoners from these cages. You're, you're actually filling a blue bar, kind of like, again, yeah. Diablo 3 Rift. This is so kind of what I, what I saw when I was leveling up in Frostfire Ridge, where I'd find those random mm -hmm. encounter zones, that kind of... A, a little bit like that, but, but a bit more structured. So again, yeah. imagine you're going to a camp, and your goal is like to disrupt the ogre slavers in Frostfire. And you can do that by killing any mob you see. In some cases, you can kill mobs, loot keys from their corpses, free prisoners. You can knock over, you can destroy weapon racks. You can trigger rare spawn bosses and kill them. All of those things that you do are going to fill this bar. You know, completing big events like a rare spawn might fill up by twenty percent. Freeing a prisoner might fill up by four percent. Exactly, right. but it's much much more free form, much yeah. less like okay, I have to go free Lao Softbook from his cage for the fiftieth time. Kill Twelve dragons and smash yeah. six stone beings. But also so, part of that rotation yeah. is going to be on a number of days. One of the options available will be go to Ashram, yeah. and well, going to Ashram is going to be go to Ashram and collect X number of fragments, which are the cards are there, which you can get from killing any of the mobs in the outdoor, in the outdoor battleground area, but also, of course, you can kill loot other players in Ashram to get fragments from that. And you get more from players? Well, so if you kill a player, you'll get half of what they were carrying. Oh. So if you kill someone who has a lot, you literally could <laughs> get, you know, you could... I like that. Exactly. Yeah, what, yeah. You, you could just finish your quest in one fell swoop if you get lucky and find the right person who's just, you know, their, their pockets are bulging with fragments. Um, but I mean, ultimately, for the person who's more PvP-oriented, this should be a fun option for them to kind of complete that progression. And the major reward for this is the Texas Crystal Currency that I mentioned earlier. This is going to be the primary source of that currency, which you can then spend on gear of various types or use on your bonus rolls. Oh, uh, so, Sensor of Eternal Agony, which uh, on the Timeless Isle, I personally had a ton of fun mm -hmm. with. Are we going to see anything like that in Draenor? We might. Um, no specific plans for something exactly like that. It was definitely a little bit of a controversial feature. Some yeah. players felt, you know, very strongly about same faction PvP griefing and the things that that exposed. Ultimately, I mean, that was our answer to one of the problems that we faced whenever we try to do a meaningful world PvP element. Yeah. Because the reality is, a lot of our servers were unbalanced faction wise. You know, game wide, there's a very good balance between Horde Alliance players in terms of the broad WoW population, but individual servers. A lot of them skew towards you know 70, 30, 20, 80. There's some that are ridiculously extreme where it's like 99, yeah. 1. Um, and, and on those servers, a world PvP element is inherently going to be frustrating for the side that's not in power. So the sensor was a way for us to say, okay, let's do world PvP in a way that's completely faction agnostic. You know, it's yeah. almost like the sensor transformed people were their own third faction that were yeah. friendly to each other. So I mean, in Ashran, we've solved some of those issues by actually pooling multiple realms together into you know into groups that will go into the same Ashra instance and we can do that by trying to faction balance the two sides, we'll pool horror heavy realms together with alliance heavy realms. So there should always be, you know, a, so a good set. Instance servers will match up correctly and should be well it's yeah it's, it's really showing the same like we've pre-created pools of you know eight, twelve, sixteen realms yeah. that unbalance the pool as a whole has a very good faction balance. Okay. So you'll be seeing a lot of you'll be seeing the same realms in your Ashra on a regular basis, some of the same familiar faces. It's not going to feel like completely random, cool. but again, we're getting away from, you know, oh, this is completely horde dominant, the Alliance player is just going to go in and get stomped, or oh, this server has, you know, no horde dominant at all, yeah. and yeah. Sure, and just like one quick thing to finish up, sure. Australian servers, what do you think this is going to mean for all the Aussie players? It's, out there? It, it, it's, it's so exciting. Um, we're really happy. It's something we've wanted to do for a very long time. Yeah. Amazing to be able to come here in person, come down to Sydney and make the announcement and share the news with everybody. It's great to have it. And yeah, I think all aspects of the game just feel better when you're playing in a more responsive yeah. environment and going from you know, 300, 400 ping down to you know double digits, it's going to be a big deal. So I can't wait. It's going to be so exciting. Thank you for all your time. It's been a pleasure.